Welcome to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at Dialog Pathology. Today's topic is endometriosis. The learning objectives for today's topic, you know, we will we will see what is the definition of endometriosis. We will look into some historical aspects. We will see uh, the epidemiological aspects of endometriosis and the most important component that is pathogenesis of endometriosis, clinical features and morphology in endometriosis and a bit about treatment and prognostic uh, factors. Now what is endometriosis? Endometriosis is defined as the presence of endometrial glands and stroma in a location outside the uterus. That is very important because presence of endometrial glands and stroma within the uterus that is within the myometrium is called as adenomyosis whereas the presence in a location outside the uterus is known as endometriosis. It is a complex gynecological disorder that can affect women from right from menarche until menopause. You know, these patients present with chronic pelvic pain, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia and infertility. Dysmenorrhea is painful menstruation, dyspareunia is pain during intercourse and infertility. So ultimately all these clinical manifestations, you know, um, they sort of decrease the quality of life of the affected individual. Now coming to some historical aspects, though medical textbooks older than 4000 years have described this entity, it was in 1860 when Karl von Rokitansky, who was the first person to diagnose endometriosis microscopically. Moving on to epidemiological aspects, it affects 10% of reproductive age women. Among asymptomatic women, uh, the presence of endometriosis can be uh, can range from 2 to 11 percent and 5 to 50 percent among infertile women and around 5 to 21 percent among women hospitalized for pelvic pain if an individual is symptomatic and if she is an adolescent the chances that this patient might be having endometriosis is 49 to 75 percent now let us understand uh, the different sites of endometriosis this is an illustration, you know, um, depicting the sagittal uh, section view of the pelvis. That's the uterus along with cervix and that's a fallopian tube along with the ovary and that's uh, the bladder anteriorly and then the intestine and the rectum um, posteriorly and that's a sacrum. That The red one is the pelvic peritoneum. Okay, now the most common sites of endometriosis are one, it could be in the ovary and two, it could be uh, in the uterine ligaments and three, it could be in the pouch of Douglas. Fourthly, it could be in the rectovaginal septum. This is a rectovaginal septum. It could be on the pelvic peritoneum. Okay, It could be in the vagina. It could be in the intestines as well and could be in the fallopian tubes. And last but not the least, it could be in the scar. Okay, on the abdominal wall, it could be hysterectomy scar or it could be uh, an obstetric condition like, you know, caesarean section scar. That is when it is referred to as scar endometriosis. So these are the various sites of endometriosis. Coming to the most important aspect of today's uh, tutorial, that is pathogenesis of endometriosis. Let us see what is the origin of uh, this endometriotic tissue outside the uterus. There are various theories, you know, one of them is regurgitation theory. Another one is a metaplastic theory. The third one is a benign metastasis theory. Fourthly, a progenitor cell theory. Now, what is this regurgitation theory? It just says that it is the endometriotic tissue is because of reflux of menstrual debris containing viable endometrial cells through the fallopian tubes into the peritoneal cavity, right? And that is also known as retrograde menstruation. Now moving on to the metaplastic theory, it says there is transformation of peritoneal mesothelium into a glandular endometrium, okay, and that is referred to as coelomic metaplasia. Now what is this benign metastasis theory, wherein there is transport of endometrial cells through the lymphatic and blood vessels, okay. So it's basically a lymphatic and vascular metastasis, though it is not a malignant uh, uh, entity. Progenitor cell theory means there is a circulating stem cells or progenitor cells from the bone marrow which differentiates into the endometrial tissue in the location outside that of uterus. Quick summary, the pathogenesis of endometriosis can be regurgitation theory and this is the most favored theory, right, wherein there is retrograde menstruation leading to implantation 
and uh, the benign metastasis theory where the endometrial tissue is transported via the blood vessels and lymphatics into distant sites. The metaplastic theory is coelomic metaplasia where the mesothelium of pelvis and abdomen converts into an endometrial tissue and lastly there is differentiation of the circulating stem cells of the bone marrow into the endometrial tissue okay so as i told you the regurgitation theory is the most favored theory of endometriosis now the endometrial tissue is not just morphologically similar to the normal endometrium basically it is functional also hmm? this endometrial tissue outside the uterus functions just like that of an endometrial tissue within the uterus within the uterus right okay but the other important and the most important thing is that it is abnormal okay one why it is abnormal let us understand so this is an endometrial tissue consider this is an endometrial tissue where these are the endometrial glands and that is these stromal cells so why is that there is abnormality in the functioning of these endometrial tissue let us understand this these stromal cells you know they secrete chemokines cc and cxc chemokines which recruit or even attract the monocytes the macrophages the neutrophils eosinophils and lymphocytes all these inflammatory cells activate you know pro inflammatory cytokines what are these pro inflammatory cytokines they can be tumor necrosis alpha interleukin 1 beta interleukin 6 these are the ones the pro inflammatory cytokines are activated by these cells right and second one it can also activate pro angiogenic factors like vascular endothelial growth factor it can also activate various growth factors and adhesion molecules okay so basically these chemokines which recruit these inflammatory cells and activate all these mediators are pro inflammatory cytokines pro angiogenic factors growth factors apart from uh, secreting chemokines these stromal cells also secrete aromatase which leads to increased estrogen production that's very important okay production of estrogen by the aromatase synthesized by these stromal cells now what happens when there is estrogen production so all this estrogen production the inflammatory cytokines and all these things results in increased survival and persistence of the endometriotic tissue in a foreign location okay so this is an important uh, factor in the pathogenesis of endometriosis we need to understand that this is functional by itself only because of these stromal cells all these stromal cells are the ones which are the culprit in endometriosis which which helps in survival and persistence by means of secretion of all these things right another important aspect of endometriosis is so these patients are very sensitive to pain let us see why this happens in these patients the macrophages which are recruited by the chemokines you know they also secrete nerve sensitizing insulin like growth factor 1 now what does that do this growth factor 1 insulin like growth factor 1 is the one which is responsible for heightened responsiveness of nociceptive neurons to normal or sub threshold afferent input so what does that do that results in some amount of alteration in pain processing and that is the reason why these individuals you know these patients have very very highly sensitive to even mild forms of pain if you want to read more about uh, these aspects just go through this article in new england journal of medicine which is recently published now what are the clinical features of endometriosis the most common feature include as i told you severe dysmenorrhea chronic pelvic pain dyspareunia and infertility of course the symptoms depends on the location too for example if the endometriosis is in the gastrointestinal tract the symptoms would be of painful bowel movements right so cyclical pain is another important classical feature of endometriosis which means that the pain is more worse during menstruation okay and if the patient is lucky enough very rarely endometriosis can be asymptomatic too now coming to the morphology of endometriosis grossly as we know that the endometrial endometrium tissue even outside the uterus breaks and bleeds but then in the location outside of uterus there is no route for the blood to escape and that is where the blood collects in these locations right and these collections can be microscopic collection to one or can be macroscopic up to 2 cm red brown nodules these are seen as red brown nodules and these uh, nodules smaller nodules often coils to form the larger masses 
okay uh, in ovaries a characteristic feature is seen that is the large amount of blood can be collected and in long standing cases you know it turns brown because of hemocytin laden macrophages as you know that the rbcs break down to release hemocytin and the macrophages nearby engulf these hemocytin and they are called hemocytin laden macrophages and the tissue turns brown and the ovarian tissue um, looks like that of a brownish fluid filled uh, you no know, organ and that is called as chocolate cyst of ovary okay so that's an illustration of an ovary uh, filled with you know fluid which is chocolate like dark brown color so that's about a chocolate cyst of ovary remember whenever you talk about endometriosis make sure you mention that uh, the lesion in the ovary is cystic often filled with dark brown fluid and that resembles that of a dark chocolate that's why it is referred to as chocolate cyst of ovary microscopically criteria to diagnose endometriosis at least two of the following three features should be present to make a diagnosis of endometriosis one the endometrial glands two the endometrial stroma three evidence of hemorrhage in the form of hemocytin laden macrophages of these three presence of any two will make a diagnosis of endometriosis now i will just take you through one of the example of endometriosis which was occurring in an, in the wall of the intestine okay that is an intestinal mucosa you can make out that showing columnar epithelium and look at this in the submucosa as well as in the muscularis propria you can see various uh, you know dilated cyst like structures okay so these are the endometriotic foci so there is one foci here there is another foci here there is another foci here okay now moving on to the next higher magnification you can make out that these are endometrial glands and the adjacent tissue is endometrial stroma as i told you by definition endometriosis is the presence of endometrial tissue which means you need to show the evidence of endometrial glands and stroma if any one of these is not present then you have to as per the criteria you have to demonstrate the presence of hemocytin laden macrophages which just says that there was some amount of bleed which has occurred due to this endometriotic foci that is all higher magnification showing endometrial glands with stratification and the stroma very cellular also you can see some amount of scattered inflammatory cells in the form of lymphocytes now what is the importance or significance of endometriosis one endometriosis is associated with significant morbidity in these individuals that is the most important significance okay most of these patients do have a decreased quality of life there is a chances that these endometriotic foci uh, turning into malignant transformation extremely rare very 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 uncommon okay now coming to the treatment and prognosis the endometriosis can be managed medically or and surgically you know basically it needs a multidisciplinary approach but there is high rate of recurrence and it cannot be cured completely so that is all about endometriosis we we learned about the definition we studied about the historical aspects epidemiology the most important is understanding of pathogenesis of endometriosis and then about clinical features and morphology thanks for watching click on the like button if you like this video you know do comment if you have any queries to us i am always happy to respond don't forget to subscribe for more videos thank you very much